Hi, today we're going to learn about uh, perspective drawing from a plan. Of course, I'm, this is going to be a vector drawing. Um, and this will assume you've already studied perspective uh, and understand some of the basics. We're just going to start with a rectangle here. And um, this is the top view. Let's pretend this is a floor plan for a house or something. Of course, it'll be more complicated than this, but just to learn the basic concepts, we'll use this shape. Um, I'm using a thicker line than I normally would, just so you can see it on the video. All right, so I'm going to turn it on its angle, whichever angle I like. I'm using about 45 degrees, so I think I can keep everything on this uh, frame. And I'm not showing my toolbars because this is not intended to be specific for any uh, particular drawing program. So I'll put a horizontal guide right on that corner there. And this is going to be called the picture plane. And I'm going to put another guideline through that same corner, a vertical guide. And this is going to be my line of sight. So all the uh, vertical lines in my drawing, this is going to be a two-point perspective. Um, for that reason, they're going to go straight up and down and be parallel to this line of sight. And then down here somewhere, I'm going to need a station point. Station point is, uh, represents the eye level of the person who is viewing the final drawing. Um, you do have some leeway about where you put the station point. A good way to find a place for it is to take this width here. Now if I was doing this on paper, I would measure this with a ruler, but since it's a vector drawing, I'm just going to make a rectangle and I'm going to turn it 90 degrees. bring it down to that corner, copy it and paste it, bring it down again. So I'm measuring twice the width of this box from corner to corner. And uh, I'll put my station point right there. I wouldn't worry too much about why we're doing some of these things. Uh, some of these formulas and recommendations have uh, been uh, developed over many centuries by wiser men and women than I, such as Leonardo da Vinci during the Italian Renaissance. So it's more important that we just uh, learn the procedure than to understand exactly why we're doing each thing. Although as you become more and more familiar with perspective drawing, everything will make more and more sense. So this is our station point. And once again, that's the eye level of a person who's looking at the finished drawing. And then we're going to need a horizon line and we're going to need a ground plane. And the positions of these two lines are not, are, uh, they're not arbitrary, but they, you do have some uh, leeway over where you put them. The closer the ground plane is to the station point will represent the closer the drawing will be to the person who's looking at it. And uh, you could raise and lower the horizon line depending on the angle that you want to view the final drawing from. If you want to be looking up at the top of it, then you would put the horizon line higher. And if you want a flatter angle of view, you'd put the horizon line a little lower. To help you understand that, if the horizon line and the ground plane were the same line, you'd have no perspective at all. You'd be looking square at it. So we'll put, we'll put them right here for now. Put that there and this here. Horizon line. Ground plane. Now you already, if you uh, have been working with perspective, you already know what the horizon line is. It's the, uh, represents the horizon where uh, everything disappears. The ground plane represents the ground and that will be 
the base for our drawing. So these two angles up here are important. This one here to the picture plane and this one over here. So if I were doing this on paper, I would take a protractor and measure that angle and that angle. But since we're doing a, a vector drawing, it's easier to just copy this and paste it. Now I have the angles, and I'm going to bring this straight down to my station point, right there. And now I'm going to grab this node here, and keeping that line on the same angle, I'm going to bring it up to my uh, picture plane here. So make sure that you don't change the angle right there. Do that same thing with this line. Bring it all the way up to the picture plane. Now, the point at which that line, I'm looking at the bottom one, intersects the picture plane, I want to put a vertical guide. Just like that. And I want to do the same thing over here. Now I'm eyeballing this. Um, when you do it, you might want to zoom in and get everything just perfect, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to do it from out here. All right, right where that vertical line intersects the horizon line is where I'm going to put my left vanishing point. So, put the vanishing point right on that line, and then I'll put my right vanishing point right on that line. So you already know what the vanishing points are. Uh, if you don't, um, we should be uh, working on basic perspective. And uh, I do have another video that you can watch if you're not familiar with anything that I'm doing. Okay, so now I'm ready to begin drawing. I have it all set up. And um, I'm going to start with um, my leading edge. Now once again, this is a, on the plan up above. We're looking down on a floor plan of a house or a building, whatever. And we're drawing that building down here in perspective. So I put a guide through my horizon. And the fulcrum of this guide should be over here on the vanishing point. Just like that. Now, when I rotate the, the guide, it will rotate around that vanishing point. So I'll do the same thing over here. Put it right on there. Move my fulcrum pivot point over to the vanishing point. Okay, now these are going to be the guides I'm going to use for all my perspective. So, as I said, we build the drawing from the ground plane, so I'll put that line up here. I'm going to put this line up here. Just like that. Now since I already have this object, I might as well use it. I'm done with it for the uh, angle measurement. So right there I'm going to begin my object. And I can establish the leading edge of my floor using the guides. Okay, now I know the angle of my leading edge. But where do these nodes go on this line? We're going to determine that with another guide, a vertical guide, right through the same uh, guide as the angle of view. This time I'm going to put my fulcrum down here on my station point so that it rotates around that. So if I go right up here to that left corner on my plan, right where the, that line and the picture plane intersect, I will put a vertical line. Then I'm going to come over to this corner here. And once again, right where the two lines intersect, I put another vertical guide. And this will determine where the edges of my, or the, 
corners of my leading edge belong right there and down here. You can see it appears a little smaller than the original, and that's because it's in perspective. Now, I will put these guides up on the corners that I just established. Right there. I'm going a little slow because I want to make sure we all understand each uh, point before we move on. I have seen some tutorials that go so fast I don't even know what's going on, so I don't want to do that. I'm going to put this on there just to double check, make sure I've done it properly. Put a guide through here. Now if I've set up this drawing correctly, this guide should come right through that corner, and as it does, um, that means I did did this correctly. So I'm going to put this uh, trailing edge right there. Once again, I'm eyeballing this. I, if I zoomed in, I could probably get it a lot more accurate, but it wouldn't be necessary for our purposes here. Okay, so now we have our floor plan drawn out in perspective. And normally, if this is a floor plan, you'd also get an elevation which is the side view of what you're drawing. We won't go into that now, but basically that tells you how tall to make your object, because this is just a flat floor. If we were doing a, an, an illustration of a house or a building, we would need walls and a roof and everything else, so the, the elevation will tell us how tall we want to make or a three-dimensional uh, box. So that might be for another video because now we know at least how to set up a perspective drawing from a plan. So that's a perspectively accurate uh, rendition of uh, this floor plan in proper perspective and that's how we set it up. If you enjoyed this short tutorial Check out Vector Drawing 101. It's designed to simulate a community college course that you might take. And we'll take you step by step through the basics of vector drawing. It's divided up into 13 separate classes, each one covering a specific point of vector drawing. These are on MP4 for viewing on a computer. And you can check it out at this website, bit ly slash nw vector and I'll put a link for this website in the comments below. Thanks for watching.